I've got a package? What could it be? Well, let's find out together. So I already ripped the glue tape and let's open it up together. So, what could this be? A Kazon fighter. Okay, we have a glimpse, but we still don't know. Okay. Ooh, look, pellets. It's the first time I got something like that. <laughs> I'm so happy because of those now. And what's this? A Maquis fighter. And it's something Star Trek related. Okay, it's from Revel, as you can see. And let's turn it. Ta-da! It's an Intrepid class USS Voyager. 51.4 centimeters plastic kit. Can't wait, let's open it up. Okay, let's get serious. I saw this vessel in Zagreb, Croatia. I wanted to buy it, but I didn't. And then I found it on the internet and I went all, what the hell, I'm gonna buy it. And let's open up this box. It's a very beautiful box, I have to say. Very huge as well. I'm just gonna use an ordinary technical pencil. It doesn't have to be a perfect incision. Okay. Oh, oh my God. Look at the size of that thing. Look at the saucer section. This thing's huge. Compare it with my head, my God. This is, this is going to be one of the biggest ships that I'm gonna own. Okay, I'm just gonna take it quickly out of this bag. <laughs> I mean, look at that. Look at the amount of detailing that's in here. That's amazing. The phaser strips. They're going, they're protruding out. So amazing. The holes for the windows and everything. It's absolutely amazing. The secondary hull as well. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And then we have a bag number two, which probably contains secondary hull. Another thingy in here, holding it down. A very large bag. Uh, there are those kind of a meshes in here. Whoop, there we are. So, Starfleet insignia, and those are the pylons. Okay, unfortunately, I was hoping for a transparent impulse engines, but seems they're not transparent, but okay. Aft part, which houses the shuttle bay, the deflector dish, that kind of a sensor thing in here. There's a secondary deflector, the deflector antenna, warp engines, and a couple of other details in here. Ah, there it is, the secondary hull. So just a two huge pieces. I think there is something in here. Oh, there they are, the transparent bits. Okay, there we are, warp engine grills and windows, Bassard collectors, the deflector dish, again, another warp grill and more windows. And a huge book and Oh my god, this box never ends. Okay, now it's empty. Let's say goodbye to that. Beautiful box, absolutely beautiful. I don't want to throw it away. Okay, here we are. Assembled ship, Intrepid class. Some nice schematic in here. Um, I'm gonna read that a little bit later on. We have uh, oily paper. I don't know why, but okay. Safety advice, screw safety, we don't need that. Decals, nice. Okay, I really hope that these are not water decals because if they are, I have a problem with those. I was expecting for more registry numbers and everything else, but it seems that we're gonna be stuck with Voyager NCC 74656, but okay, I'm not even What mad. I need to do next is put on a primer, then put a color, then put the decals and everything else. But what I want to do first is to assemble this vessel so we can take a first look at it. Why I'm so happy about it is I can put electronics inside and I would love to do a windows. These little points need to go inside of each other 
and I don't think that's gonna hold the ship very well so I'll probably need to use some kind of a glue to hold it yeah as I said not holding I've barely started but I'm already lost I think I'm gonna actually need those instructions when I take these two parts that make a warp nacelle and connect them I have to put this little stick inside of this hole because when I take secondary hole that stick is going to lay inside of that and then when you put the top piece on as you can see you have a perfectly flat warp nacelle but as the intrepid goes to warp it powers up its warp engines and the nacelle pylon rises up here's the thing that's super cool so we can have Voyager in cruising speed or Voyager in warp speed. That's awesome. Let's assemble a second one. Kind of opening up a little bit. I have to glue everything up, I know. I'm currently assembling a secondary hull to be precise warp engines. Um, I had a little trouble with them, so I had to consult the book. But, as you know, the Intrepid class has a variable geometry warp field. I was right about one more thing, I will need to use sandpaper or a file because as I was breaking off parts from this kind of a mesh, you see this, this kind of a little bit in here, because of that I can't put the flector dish onto the secondary hull, it just doesn't fit. Uh, I just came to a sad realization I won't be able to light the ship up, uh, as I said, there is this little tiny rod in the secondary hull, so there is no possible way that I can pull the wire through this. Uh, I would need to cut through, I don't know, somewhere in here, then through the nacelle, then out of the nacelle, just to get inside of a warp engine. I don't know, do I want to do that? I'm afraid I could ruin the entire model and also the impulse engines aren't transparent so they can't light up which kind of a sucks but yeah I, I could probably do a light up of windows at least and deflector and bridge and something like that we'll see look at this it's a shuttlecraft look how cute this thing is oh my god this entire set make me so happy so I just spent about two hours trying to scrap and shed metal for wiring and LEDs. I have a kind of a plan to make a USB light up system, hope it will work. Okay, it's day number two, I have completed the aft section of the warp assembly. I actually managed to create lighting inside of it by poking a super small hole through which I kind of pulled the wires through. You could have seen in the clip before the, how I lit up the warp nacelle, but I want to show you how it looks so far. So here we are. I actually think that I need to put an LED into the Bassard collectors to make them a little bit stronger. Everything is being powered up via this little USB phone charger. So it's gonna be totally USB lit. So the warp assembly has been completed, let's just test out the variable geometry warp field. So this is day number 3, as you can see I'm almost fully done with the ship and the electronics. Some of the paint is already been applied to the warp engines, I will actually need to open them up again. I'm gonna put another LED in here for the collectors. They don't really light up so well, but I really hope it's gonna light up nicely. Day number four, I still freaking hate water slide decals. So they're being held only by the water on the model kits. And the problem with them is that they tend to break super easily the glue melts them and they fall off uh, i actually managed to melt one of the escape pods which is now permanently destroyed i think two of the thrusters are kind of a sag now due to the glue and everything else is falling off i don't know what to do with them 
Uh, I will probably need to order a replacement, but the ship is in one piece, which is great. The electronics have been totally put in. Everything is glowing perfectly. My fears uh, that I won't be able to light up the engines. I managed <laughs> to do something about that as well. So yeah, I'm super happy about it. I still need to paint like phaser strips and a couple of other parts aboard but everything else looks absolutely amazing day number five i'm 95 percent done still have to do a little bit of a decaling and paint jobs but as you can see everything lights up beautifully uh some of the leds are actually twinkling a little bit i probably made something a little bit wrong while i was soldering but as you can see, all of the windows light up nicely, the deflector dish, everything's perfect. And I placed an LED right in here because I wanted for it to shine directly on the ship's name and registry like it should. Uh, I could cut out some of these windows just to make a little bit more of the authentic glow, but I think this is going to work fine. I was actually thinking about cutting into torpedo launchers, make them glow red, but no, this is, this will be fine. I still have a little bit of a light bleed in here, but I placed LED right in here. That's why it glows so strong. And we have an open shuttle bay with a small little shuttle inside. The impulse engines can't be lit up, as I said, and I don't want to cut into them. So people, here we are. This is the ship one week later with all the decals and paint job applied on. The electronics is inside, everything is working nicely. Sometimes LEDs in the saucer and inside of this engine nacelle tend to flash. Sometimes they flash like disco strobe lights, sometimes they don't flash at all. But I have to say that this vessel is absolutely beautiful. This is definitely one of the biggest ships that I have in my collection. It looks amazing, absolutely amazing. So this is going to wrap this video up guys. I really hope that you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like because it helps this channel a lot. And if you would like to see the rest of my ship collection, be sure to tell me in the comment section down below or answer a poll by clicking a button right about in here on the top right section of the video. And until next time, guys, love you all because you are the best. Geronimo, out. Oh, look, as soon as I finished the video, you stopped flickering. Nice. Love you, electronics. I love you.